What's going on guys? Welcome back. In today's video we are going to show you how to remove the stock tire hugger and the chain guard and replace it with this nice carbon piece that I got right here. So we are going to first start with the chain guard. You have your Phillips head screw right there. It is easy to strip these things so make sure that you put constant pressure on it and that you're not stripping the Phillips head. I thought it was a Torx bit at first but it's actually not. It's a Phillips head. There is also a bolt in there, and that is a T25. All right, so we're using our Phillips head screwdriver. We are going to make sure that we push pretty hard against this thing while we're turning it, just to make sure that we don't strip it out because we're going to have to use these bolts again. And it's actually, ooh, it's actually threaded. So you don't want to strip these out. You're going to have to buy new ones. And then this thing just pops right out. There is a rivet piece in here. This will go on your new piece. And this will screw into there to reinstall it. Now I'm going to get the T25. All right, so I got the bolt out of there. It actually dropped right there. But to release this from your stock one, you're just going to pull this forward and then it should come right out. So this bolt that we just took out, it does have some blue thread locker on it. So clean it up a little bit and then make sure you put some medium strength thread locker back on here before you install it back into over there on your new piece. So there is one bolt all the way in the corner over there. So you're gonna have to get the screwdriver, make sure you press that tightly and take that one out as well. So in order to get to that bolt, you're going to have to take out the chain guide. And what you wanna do is probably hold this and just push this thing forward. It will end up snapping out. It will sound like it's gonna break, but it comes right out. As you can see, it's just kinda of how it attaches in there. All right, so now we can get to this bolt right over, yep, right over there. You see it, it's right there. So the chain guard has to come off. So unfortunately I did end up stripping that little bolt. I just got the smallest vice grip that I could get and now I'm just gonna keep turning it till it comes out. So I did get this out enough so I could just pull it out like this. I'm just going to leave that in there for now. Obviously you need to take this piece out and put it into your new piece. Alright, so we did get this one out. We loosened that all the way. And I was actually able to get in here without taking off the muffler. The only reason was because I have something like this where I could put a little, you know, a little Phillips head in there. And there is just enough room to get in between there and there. If you don't have something like that, you will have to take off your, your slip-on muffler. All right, so that little bolt is out. Now this one just pushes out like so, and you grab it. There it is. So same thing with this one. I got it loose enough where I'm going by hand. That comes out. And then you want to pay attention to how this is with the brake line, because when you reinstall it, you're going to want to install it the same exact way. And then after this is out, you should just be able to pull the whole thing out like so. You're gonna have to disconnect it from here and you can pull off the rear tire hugger. Don't forget to get this little part out just by pushing it up from underneath and then it comes right out. To get this part out, you're gonna push this down a little bit and you'll see when you lift this up, there's the hoop that's gotta go through. So push that out. This thing actually moves. See how it swings? And then it should just pop right out. So you have to pull this out from there, like so. So in order to get this thing in without taking off the foot peg, you're going to have to lean it to the left side like this and slowly push it in. You're going to have to be careful of the clearance on there because it's basically going to touch. So you have to pull it down a little bit push it in until it goes all the way in there. 
might have to take off your rear set or you can finagle it around there, but either way, just be careful not to scratch it. This looks so much better already. So first, line up your holes. Make sure you get your brake line under here. And I'm not sure if this, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be over it. So make sure this goes over the piece because you don't want to crack this wire. Obviously, the steel braided line is so much more stronger. You might want to end up pulling this thing a little bit straight just to get a little bit farther away from the exhaust. I mean, there's plenty of space, but just be wary of that. If this is close to the exhaust, you want to pull it back towards the front and get it away from the exhaust. Make sure the bolts are not in these little parts. Push them down into place first. Just push it in. Push it into the hole. So that's all nice and tight. You can start putting your screws back in. Again, be careful because you can strip these things out easily. All right, so I put the little piece back in here. I'll have to put that little screw back in. I'm gonna get this bolt that was T25, put a tiny bit of blue thread locker on there and put it back inside over there, back down there. Just don't forget to get the bolt all the way down in here. After that's all set, I did end up taking off the muffler just so that it'd be a lot easier to get this back in here. Because I just couldn't, I was able to get it out, but putting it back in, forget it. I wasn't able to do it. So you put this screw back in, and then you put this screw back in as well. Like I said, be careful because these things strip. Now when I go to put the muffler back on, I'm going to put some WD-40, clean this up, clean up this part of course, and then it should slip on pretty easy. It actually wasn't really that hard to take off, so it wasn't a big deal. So yeah, basically this is it installed. And it looks pretty good, i got to say. Happy with it. Yeah, so it does look good. The fitment was not perfect yet. If you're really not familiar with putting on fenders, you know, you may have to have your friend help you out because you do want to kind of just get everything threaded for the most part and then start working them in. Just because the fitment, I wouldn't say it was perfect for sure. The price was good. I think it was like, I got it on sale for like 164 and then plus tax and free shipping. So it was like a buck 80 or something like that. But it does look great, so I gotta give them props to that. But something that I really do not like is the hardware that BMW has on this thing from factory. Like these little freaking screws. Why couldn't they make them a Torx bit or something like that? You know what I mean? Like a Phillips head of all things, and of course, it's not like it's metal, so it does strip really easily. So unfortunately, it is what it is. I am going to have to get a new bolt for the center part over here because I did strip it like I said earlier. But we'll deal with that a little bit later when I get the bolt. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know, that looks good. I guess you can't really beat the price on it. It is real carbon from China. And, of course, like I said, the fitment wasn't perfect. It, it was okay. It's not bad, but it's, you know, compared to this uh, Hydro Dip ABS plastic stuff, it's just... This stuff fit part, you know, this stuff fit perfect, and this thing not so much. So, either way, I'm still pretty happy with how it came out. So, what I did with this little bolt that was stripped was I just used the Dremel and I cut a slot in it like so, so I could use a flathead. And now I should be able to reuse this no problem. So, if you do end up stripping this bigger one like I did, obviously you try not to, but if you do. Like I said, you just take the Dremel and then you just cut a little slot in there and you'll make it into a flathead uh, bolt.